Hi, welcome to this A-Level PE Sport and Society, and it's on social action theory and its influence on sport. And this is quite a tricky topic. Um, it's based for AQAPE, but it's probably relevant to most exam boards too. So I've got two pictures as a little starter here. You've got mob football, probably pre-1780. you got people throwing punches, people being stamped on, can't really see the ball very easily, looks like it's male-dominated. And on the right-hand side, we've got a female international football match. Looks like it's Sweden versus Holland, probably from uh, championships. You can see spectators in the background. And social action theory sort of helps explain how we've gone from mob football all the way to an inclusive version of football. OK, so I'm going to go through this and I hope this helps your understanding. So how has football changed? OK, so we're going to look at how it's developed. Now, we know from doing the earlier units on popular recreation that football started as a mob game. And it's developed all the way through to this modern game. But how did all that happen? In a farm, and it's now far, far more respectable. It's technologically advanced. It's a global game. It's organised, has leagues. How has it gone about in that change? Okay, you probably know that the middle class are involved, public school boys are involved, all the way up to now where we've got TV, businesses, etc. involved. Now, social action theory sort of helps explain how all of those processes happen. It's people. So it people change the aspects of society. And social action theory kind of believes that it's individuals can do that within their roles within society. Individuals, actions can bring about change. OK, if we didn't have that, we could still be playing mob football. But people's attitudes and views and their influence and interactions with other people have helped bring about change in football all the way to the point that we are today. This happens across society in a variety of different aspects as well. OK. Here we go. So think, why do footballers shake the referee's hand? Think about the reasons why they shake the hand. And do you think that was always a thing? Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh, this probably goes back to the muscular Christianity, Corinthian ethos of fair play, that middle class respectability where you shake opponents' hands and shake referees' hands, and you'd be right. So this might have its origins all the way back into the 19th century where football became more rational and we had respect for each other. And that still echoes to today because people felt that was an important part of football, an important part of sport, and it should still keep occurring. You've probably played in matches or in tournaments where you've shaken the opposition's hand or the referee's hand. That's because it's been developed over that time that people think it's the right thing to do in that sport. And it's brought about maybe a more respectable, friendly nature. Is this linked to socialisation? So socialisation, you'd have looked at prior to this, and socialisation is to do with how we learn society's norms, how we learn the values and normal behaviours within a society. So has Theo Walcott here decided to do that to himself or has he at some point been socialised and has he then become the person that shakes the referee's hand? Now looking at this picture and people in the future looking at pictures like this, they are they being socialised by seeing this picture and they think, ah, oh, that's what you have to do at the end of football matches. So social action does have a bit of an impact on socialization as well. So, social action theory definition a way of view, viewing socialization emphasizing social action. Okay, so how social action and socialization work together to bring about change in society. You could be socialized incorrectly, you could be socialized with really negative and not on and views not 
necessarily deemed by society as acceptable. But social action hopefully brings about change in a good way for the whole of society. And therefore, socialisation will slightly change and people will have better views and better uh, world outlet outlooks on life and society. So what does this mean? For example, theorists believe that society is created and changed by individuals interacting with each other across society, not just its leaders. Now, often we think, oh, government have control and only those with power and wealth control society. Now, that does have some weight, but the individual's power is greater often than they believe. And one person can bring about small change and groups of people thinking the same way can start to bring about change. But an individual often stimulates that and can bring about slight change in society over time. And that can lead to bigger change. Society has changed over the last 200 years of what you've been studying. That is evidence that social action theory has worked. Look at the suffragette movement. So over 100 years ago, Women didn't have a vote in this country. The suffragette movement helped to bring into everybody's minds the inequalities of not allowing women to vote. So that small movement, probably started by one person bringing in other people, has brought about gender equality in our society. So how it links to sport. So sport has developed alongside society through the history section. You learnt that, that the social factors of the time influence what happens in sport. Mob football was violent and harsh because society was violent and harsh. As we go into the Victorian era, Industrial Revolution, the middle classes bring about more fair play because society is more respectable and we have more law and order and police forces. So it does often mirror this. So look at that shift from violent games to respectable games to all the way to our technology games that we have today. We have technology built into our elite sport, video replay, satellite TV. So our society is highly technologicalized, and so is sport. We call this progression. OK, so this is a sociological term, progression, the process of gradually developing towards a more advanced state. So it goes through stages of development to improve it and that we can definitely see that in sport today. Sport has developed over time because of those in involved. So we know that the class structure influenced the change in football as the middle class became more involved, became more respectable. Rules were developed because higher levels of literacy, etc. Education and family has influenced this all the way along. So education has been involved. The boys at public schools were involved. Then their masters became involved. Secondary schools developed for all students. And that helped develop sport as well. OK, so think back to the work you've done on socialisation. Social action is a type of socialisation that helps society develop adopt the norms of that society at the time. So the interactionist approach, now this is a, a group of sociologists who have a belief of how society works and their approach to things. So interactionist means they believe that people interacting has a big impact, a bit like social action theory. So the study of how individuals behave within a society. So they look at the impact of certain behaviours, attitudes, how that affects and changes society. If you look at the, the globe and the world, all countries are slightly different. So their social action theory and the way the people have acted in those society have brought about sometimes small differences to ours and other times very large differences. It looks at how individuals help create and change society. Society still controls the individual, but allows for individuals to be creative. Now, what that means is there's still law and order, there's still rules you have to take, take on board. Even in a democracy, you don't always get your say, but it does allow for individuals to be creative. So free speech, press, 
the written word, literature, TV, movies, all of those are ways of being creative and getting across your point of view and maybe a little bit of social action within that. How, how you feel the world should be, how, you're, how you think your society should be. That's that creativity. Even things like protests are kind of a creative way of doing that. So how it is in sport. So interactive see institutions such as sports club as a result of people's interaction. So those sports clubs were created by probably like minded individuals getting together and developing their ideas and bring them to the point of having a club and the rules and developing maybe more clubs and leagues, etc. Those involved can also change the sport or club too. And that doesn't stop. Sport is always evolving, never stops. There's always slight rule changes. There's always slight changes to league structures. Sport doesn't like to stay still. It likes to develop. And it's the people's ideas that do that. Do that. They can bring about change. Change the sports to match the perspectives and identities of those playing them. So sport often reflects the people who play, their culture, their outlooks. Sport reflects that and it comes to match that because the people making decisions on how the sport go often have a similar viewpoint. It makes sports organisations democratic, less hierarchical and every member gets a vote. If you're involved in even a junior club, your club will have voting for members who are eligible on changes that happen just in your local club. It might have a chairman, a secretary, etc., who are in a position of responsibility, but nine times out of 10, they don't get paid any money. They're just there to really kind of make the organisation run and they want to hear people's views on how their club moves forward. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, I've got other A-level videos out there, so you can go and check those out as well. Um, there's some stuff also out, out there on, on, on analysis if you're in year 13 or if you do it in year 12 as well.